You may be seated. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our most gracious heavenly father, our dad, we love you so much. And we thank you today as we stand in your presence celebrating the life of our brother, your son, Ernie Greenwood. And Heavenly Father, as we stand here and opening in prayer, there's all kinds of emotions here. And I know how his sons are feeling. And I understand how his wife feels. I don't understand how others may feel. I've never lost a child, Lord. But I thank you that your grace is our creator and as our Father, is in our midst and in our presence, encouraging us and strengthening us and letting us know life is a journey, it's short, it's quick, and it can be powerful. We thank you that today, the revelation of being able to make a mark in this earth and to walk like a champion, we thank you that today will be a day of that revelation given to each and every one of us that our faith and our confidence would be in you just like Ernie walked, trusted, and lived in you. And we thank you the same spirit that motivated him, strengthened him, that guided him through life is here right now to continue to do that in his boys, his wife, his family, and all that love him. Sir, we just ask you to move in a way that only you can, and we love you, and we thank you that you did not take him, but we know that you did receive him. And we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, because we know that Ernie is up there with the rest of our families and brothers and friends looking over that big old Holy Ghost balcony into the earth, and Ernie, you smile today, sir. We just thank God for your salvation and the people that you've touched. And we're here to honor God and to honor your life. And we know all of you in heaven can hear it. So as the scripture says, let all of heaven and let all of earth rejoice. And everybody said, amen. Well, there was a verse of scripture that Ernie's had for a while. And they uh, wanted me to read Psalm 90 verse 12. And they said it just fits him. I think it's been on his refrigerator for a while. And he says, it's very simple, and I love this. He says, help us to remember that our days are numbered and help us to interpret our lives correctly. Set your wisdom deeply in our hearts. How simple. But yet, what a prayer. What a thing to say. Well, I know with this many people here, and if you know Ernie Greenwood, you probably got something to say. And I mean, if you just know him, you probably got something to say. Because all of us can tell stuff. But we just want to take a few minutes into service, and I'd like to ask you to keep it short as absolute possible because I can't afford to keep y'all here the next week. Well, y'all can't stay the next week, can you? You can? Well, we will. <laughs> and so I want you to be thinking for just a minute. You know a good story, something that happened on the job, wherever, a ball field, where and whatever, we'd like to know about it. But now be careful. He's not here to defend himself. Make sure it's just funny and cool. Everybody all right? You really good? Well, I'll be first <laughs> since y'all thinking about it. Mine doesn't go way back. Mine just goes with my little son. Uh, I adopted Noah, and so they wanted to help me about a year ago and keeping Noah some for me. So on the Saturdays, they'd come and get him, take him to ball games, and, he, and I'm going, oh, Lord, have mercy. My little boy is hanging around all them Greenwoods. What is he going to come home being like? And he come home football star. Hello. And so he comes home, and he has a little story to tell about Ernie Greenwood, and it's so funny. He come home, and he's talking about, he's, he's going, yeah, Ernie Greenwood, he, he, he was dancing to Grandma. Grandma got a reindeer, and he was just dancing. Grandma got a reindeer, and I'm like, listen to all this. Well, then told Paula about it. I said, Paula, he noticed, he noticed him dancing like a reindeer. He'd been talking about him. Paula said, oh, that's nothing. If, if you thought that was funny, you should have seen him trying to put on his undies. 
And so my little boy, it just, he just loves Ernie. He loves, he loves you boys. He likes you guys a lot. He's here today. He told me, I said, I'm going, I'm going to minister Mr. Ernie's funeral. And he said, I'm going to. <laughs> he loves the green woods. He really does. But if there's something, you know, I want to hear a couple of you give me a good story. Who's got one? You can be kin to him and tell it. Now, this many people, there's no way all of you are Baptists. Come on, somebody can talk. I wouldn't have said Baptist if I wasn't one, but I figured me being a Baptist, I could get away with that. So, I've got one. Tommy Pope, let me come to you. This will be good. I'll just share this real quick. So, Ernie never called me about politics, ever. He never bothered me about anything as far as Columbia, the legislature, till about a month ago. And he called me. I didn't know if he had a flat tire. I didn't know if it was an emergency. Ernie needed me, and he needed me to call him immediately. He wanted to know if the governor could really stop football. <laughs> and if the governor could, he wanted his number. <laughs> that is Ernie. That is Ernie. You're not stopping football. Who else has got something to say? Well, now, if you don't want to tell it, you don't have to. But I tell you what, I do believe if you're not going to share, I believe one of Ernie's sons, you wanted to share, didn't you? Would you like to do that right now? Yeah, sure. All right. Sorry. Yes, ma'am. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. That's good. Thank you. People try to be so nice. Just say it. Would you like for me to play this song before you speak, or would you rather speak before the song? Play the song. Play the play. You sure? Yeah. All right. Ernie has picked out a song. <clears throat> I'm just going to give you a warning. <laughs> Woo! He picked out a song by, uh, what's Luke's last name? Combs. Combs. Y'all probably mostly know him. And uh, I listened to that song. <laughs> And he didn't get through the first verse, and I was already lost it, okay? So I think I can behave myself today, but I want you to know when I heard that song, and they said you picked it out, it just took me back to me and my daddy. And it was almost like you said, Pastor, you want this song? You can have it. I think you could use it. And I know y'all probably think preachers don't like other kinds of music, but we do. We just don't tell you because we like that real spiritual. Amen. Play Luke. you stay a little while keep me safe cause there's monsters right outside daddy please don't go I don't want to be alone cause the second that you're gone they're gonna know before he went to bed he grabbed my hand and said just cause I'm leaving it don't mean it I won't be right by your side When you need me You can't see me In the middle of the night Just close your eyes And say a prayer It's okay, I know you're scared When I'm not here But I'll always be right there yeah. Even though I'm leaving Sam don't like to wait He's got a big old plane That's gonna take me far away I know I act tough But there's a churning in my gut Cause I just can't call you up When things get rough Before I left he hugged my neck And said Just cause you're leaving It don't mean
Won't you stay a little while? I never thought I'd see the day I had to say goodbye. Daddy, please don't go. I can't do this on my own. There's no way that I can walk this road alone. Daddy grabbed my hand and said, Just cause I'm leaving. It don't mean that I won't be right by your side When you need me and you can't see me In the middle of the night Just close your eyes and say a prayer It's okay, boy, I ain't scared I won't be here But I'll always be right there Even though I'm leaving I ain't going You see what I mean? You, if, you, if you love your daddy and your daddy goes on before you do, it just kind of rings your bell like that. And I had the best dad in the whole world, and he did the same thing for me that he did, that your dad did for you. And he has left you with an awesome testimony of how to live. And boy, did he leave a good one. Oh, Ernie, are you ready? Yeah. Oh. I'm going to get up here and talk to y'all. Yeah, take you a seat. All right, I will. So, uh, I'm Ernie Greenwood the fourth, the youngest one. Then, what? Oh yeah, you are the youngest. I'm. I'm. You know, my dad. You know, he was loved dearly. He loved everybody. He loved South Point. He loved you know anybody that came into his life. And when he came into a room, he he lighted up. You know he. He don't care who you are. He'd walk into the convenience store and he'd just light up, light up anything. You know, he was great. I have uh, one story. I was about seven, uh, seven years old, and uh, he had work the next day. It was Sunday night, and we were playing Monopoly, and uh, I played till about two, three a.m. And I was in my underwear and my Batman cape, and he didn't care. And we were sitting there playing, having fun. But yeah. And, uh, you know, I know that, you know, God received him. He ain't, he ain't take him, you know. Sometimes you need a good uh, offensive lineman leading the way. <laughs> but, yeah. And then, you know, he's, he's, he was great. He was awesome. He'd hang out with about anybody. He loved everybody. But, yeah, <laughs> I, think, I think I'm good right now. <laughs> hey, if y'all want some more stories, you know, y'all can talk to me. <laughs> you did good, young man. You really did do good. Hey, man, give him a clap. He, boy, Daddy's proud of him. He's proud of all his boys. I've heard Ernie talk about all four of these boys ever since I can remember the first one born. He did, he's always talked about his boy. You, I don't know if I'm going to let you talk or not. The Bible says women's supposed to be silent in church. Now, let me, I'm coming. My brother was so generous, he would give you the shirt off his back. I don't know how many of you know that. But when he got his brand new Suzuki Samurai, we've seen that blue car, kind of like a Jeep. He had just gotten it. I don't know how old I was. I would say 19. And I asked him to borrow it to take to Myrtle Beach spring break. And one of my cohorts is here, so she can vouch for me on that and we didn't take the best care of it and I brought it back and I don't know it was probably a little sticky but, <laughs> but he would always let me borrow anything he had money anything he was he was like that with everybody though not just because I'm his sister and I'm his sister Kim the best brother I could have ever asked for he was my security blanket amen and he was my backup if you didn't know it when I'm out of town and I need me a real good fiery preacher, I call Ernie Greenwood. I'm serious. I tell you how much people around here like Ernie. And y'all gonna probably giggle, but it really doesn't bother me, okay? I love it. Do you know how many times I've been asked when I'm leaving? <laughs> I'm serious. 
I've had people go, when are you going out of town again? I'm not really sure why. We want to hear Ernie. And I'm thinking, well, I don't have to go out of town for Ernie to preach. But that's how much everybody loved him, that if they hadn't heard him in a while, they start asking, when you leaving? I said, oh, boy. I'm going to tell them something. I'll give it to I'm going to tell them something nobody really knows, and maybe I should or shouldn't, but I'll take responsibility of it. Nobody will get shot but me, so that's all that matters. I was getting ready. It would have been this week, maybe next week, to sit down with Ernie, and I felt very impressed to ask him to come and work at the church in the ministry and become an associate pastor and work part-time with me for a while, maybe one in the full-time. He has the gift, he has the calling, and God just kept that on me. And I, I told Wendell, I said, he just went to heaven, and I'm feeling this, all this stuff about talking to him about ministry. And Wendell said, I, me too. Uh, I'm sensing all this. And he's gone. So even though he suddenly just went, it was like the things that we're all picking up were still like things are going to go on. It, it, it's not going to happen yet. But he did go. And, and now that he's in the heavens, what I want them boys to understand is your dad did not take his mantle with him. Nobody does. It's called an Elijah, Elisha principle. And when Elijah was getting ready to ascend into the heavens, Elisha told him, he, he said, I'll never leave you. I want to be with you. I want a double portion of your spirit, not God's spirit, Elijah's spirit. And he said, if you see me when I go, you can have it. That word see me means be in agreement. So Elisha, he walked with him as, a, as it was his father, father and son relationship, and he served him. And when Elijah went up, his mantle stayed. And Elisha goes and picks up Elijah. He gets his mantle and throws it up. And the scripture says that Elijah went and did twice the miracles that Elijah did. I'm telling you, you grab your daddy's mantle. You say, how do I do that? By faith. You, you just pray and you tell the father, say, I want, I want my daddy's mantle to come and rest on me. Because it will rest on every one of his seed that will accept it. I know you've grabbed it. Out there this morning, I've seen you grab it. And so I just want you to know your daddy's mantle's here. And if you want to pick it up, what that means is who you are and what you got from God, you will always have. But what he got from God, it'll give you that also. And when I got my daddy's mantle, my whole life changed drastically. I never could interpret a dream. Dreams were confusing. My daddy was a dream interpreter. My daddy passed away. <laughs> the next week, I'm interpreting dreams like crazy. I got his mantle, and it's amazing. Miss Deb? I'm going to speak for the church. Is that okay? You said so. Okay. I work here at the church, and I think another word that would um, describe Ernie is a cheerleader. He was the best. Uh, and he also gives everybody nicknames. Is that true? Because <laughs> my husband's name is Wendell, and Ernie would call him almost every week and say, Hey, Uncle Wendell, what's going on? And uh, he would listen to dreams or ideas that Wendell would have, and he'd say, Let's go for it. Let's do it. And he would just push him. He would text me sometimes, how you doing, Miss Deb? And uh, he was a cheerleader. He was an encourager. He's an edifier. And that's a, an amazing gift. And everybody you talk to, I told Kim at the house the other day, Ernie makes everybody feel like he's their best friend. He does. He does. And what a legacy. And I know you four boys are going to be like that too. And he was such a blessing here at the church. He did electrical stuff, oh, yeah. and uh, <laughs> he did a lot of other things around here, and we have awesome stories, but we're not allowed to tell yeah, those. We're not allowed to right. <laughs> She's making sure I know. We're that. not allowed to tell those. That's right. Yes. Yes, dear. Oh, man. Well, all I can say on behalf of the Greenwood family is just thank every one of you for being here. This reminds me of when my wife went to heaven. It was the biggest homegoing service I ever seen. And I pulled up in the parking lot and I went to Paula. I said, man, this is bigger than my wife's funeral. This is phenomenal. That means he is so loud. And I want to thank all of you for turning your head to all the junk that's going on out there. And you come here to honor a life. God's going to bless you for that. You better get ready for it. Were y'all ready for some real good preaching? Oh, come on. Now, listen, you're in a noisy church and y'all being too quiet. 
I said, are you ready for some good preaching? Nah, that kind of was a, if you want really good stuff, you have to make noise to get it. Now, do you want some good preaching? Oh, that'll kind of get it because today the message is about making a mark and being a champion. God bless you. Preach, Ernie. We just want to thank you for tuning in with us, and we think God's got a word for you today. This is Prayer That Works, the name of this message tonight. Turn it up good. And prayer at work is, is whenever we pray the word of God, and we just believe and stand on his word and wait for him, the, the, uh, the manifestation of the things that are come to be not as though they were. And we got to understand something. We're going to have a little English lesson tonight that were, was, and as, we're all got to remember it, it's already been done. God's already done everything he's ever going to do for us hey. when Jesus died on the cross. It's up to you and I to come into the full knowledge of what he's done for the church, you and I as a church, to declare his word and watch things to work. And tonight, we are going to do something different. We have, uh, Pat Thompson will not be here tonight. I am Ernie Greenwood. I am here to... Uh, Fill in for her tonight if you recognize that I'm not Pat Thompson. and uh, <laughs> She does a great job at ministering and taking care of the prayer uh, warrior uh, 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 office here. And I have the opportunity and the privilege to be here tonight with you guys. And I just want to thank for the opportunity. But tonight, we're going to do something a little different. We are going to do a, uh, this, this being a prophetic year, as a year of victory, as everyone knows right now, that the year of victory in every area of your life, not in just one area, but all areas of your life. So I took this, this time and privilege to do an acronym on the word victory. And understanding the word victory is, is what it's, it's going to be. You have to declare his word so you'll have victory in your life. So as I've, I've got something here for you tonight, it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be a blessing to you as we pray and just stand on his word tonight. Well, as we know, the very first letter of the word victory is V. And I chose a great word in the Bible, it's vision. God wants you to have vision in your life. And the way you get vision is get in his word and watch. And see, you got to understand something. Now, don't get too, too uh, don't, don't turn it off yet. But you got to get intimate with him. Intimacy with God is awesome. If you get anything out of the night, is God is with redeemed man. Not just any man, but the redeemed man. That means that you've been bought with a price. You have the revelation knowledge of who God, who God is and what he's done and what he's going to do for you. It's just an ongoing process and you're just going to get, it's just like a man and a wife. Intimacy is supposed to get better as you get older. And you, you know, and sometimes, hey, snuggling and, 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 and hugging each other and stuff is, is a form of intimacy. And, and you get deeper as you get into older and, st and, uh, and marriage. You're supposed to get closer. And that's the way God wants us to be. Don't come in there and take a little dip and just want to get out. He says, hey, I want you to jump right in. I want you to get on in here and let's just, just soak up the word. He titled, The Great Exchange. All you have for all he paid for. We will be talking mostly about the blood today. And when we talk about the blood, we'll get into the word right here. We're talking about DNA. I've talked about this before. DNA is a, a, a genetics is carried through and it's just like a code you can copy through. And there's also, I just renamed it. It's divine nature ability. It's not the acid, it's what you've been born with now. You've been bought with a price. Yes. But anyway, I was, I was sitting here and uh, my wife and I was, uh, my boys are out of town right now with their grandparents, so we've been honeymooning and hanging out with the word right here lately, so anyway, she told me don't get too deep with it, she said, Ernie, don't you get in there talking all that stuff, but as far as I can go with that, so, but anyway, I can tell you this, it's been a great time to just to hang out, but boy, I sure do miss my boys, I, I, that's one thing I just, man, I love it, when, I love my children, but. And that's the same way God is with you guys and, and all of us. He loves you unconditionally. He, you were paid for with a price. But that DNA, when we speak of DNA, I think of, you know, a bloodline. There's three things, the main ingredients here. The bloodline, your lineage, which is the house of David, which is flowing all the way down to, to Jesus. 
and the progenitor of this bloodline, which is Jesus. Now, definition of progenitor is a bi biologically related ancestor, a progenitor of species, a person or thing that re redirects a direction, originates something, or serves as a model or predecessor. Uh, okay, P-R-O-G-E-N-I-T-O-R. Anyway, going with that, Jesus is our progenitor. He is the one that originated your faith, but he's also... Everything that Adam did for you, I mean, uh, what Adam did with Satan, or both of them come together, Jesus is reversing everything. Hey. But how we, how we do that? We just accept it. It's a gift. What do you do when you with a gift? You just receive it by faith, right? And now everything that's in the blood, Jesus' blood, that is, whenever you go up there and you say, hey, in yourself, in your heart, you know, I, I receive his blood as my own. There's a great transfusion going on right now. And then a, a new birth, whenever people say, an, an individual says, hey, I'm going with Jesus. This is the way, the truth and the life. There's a great transfusion going on. There's a bloodline where that liquid love coming straight from God's heart is coming into yours, and there's a whole new, new birthing going on. I have raised up... I, I told you a story about Ernie. Uh, I, I get on this story. He was he's last year. He was uh, in his baseball game. He moved up to another division, and uh, he was batting probably about six or seven. He's kind of in the bottom of the lineup. First game, he gets up there. I said, "Son, you gotta you gotta remember what you train for. You gotta understand who you are." Well, he gets up there, and the ball is the count is three zero. Three balls, zero strikes. And I've taught him. I said, "Look." We can't just sit there and take a walk. Ain't many home run hitters, I mean, many people took walks and made it to the Hall of Fame. So that next pitch, he done made up his mind. He said, I'm swinging, boy. And that outside pitch came. He drove it right over the, over the wall. He walked right. Next game, he's back in cleanup. I said, because you were born for this. Hey. You know, in the natural, that's what you're doing now. But in the, in the spiritual, you're going to do this later on for Jesus. Hey. You, are, you were born for this. Well, the... Give you another story. I got my other son, Josh. He moved up into this league last this year. And I was sitting there, and Josh is kind of like my wife. They got the same spirit. They're kind of quiet, but they're getting aggressive here. Like, oh, the older she gets, she gets more aggressive. She's getting nasty. You know? I hear you, girl. But anyway, <laughs> I watched my son. I get, get up there. He didn't even wait on no pitch. He waited on the first pitch. And he, the first pitch he saw of the game first season, he drove it slam over the middle of the center field, Bo. Because he had it made up in his mind he had already going to do it. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what it's going to take. you got to make up your mind. It's already been done. Oh, it's just a preamble. I ain't even got to the notes yet. <laughs> but anyway, we're talking about divine D DNA. I was sitting there thinking about, you know, when you first start believing... You can sit there and you say, he can, talking about Jesus. He can move this mouth. He can do all things because I've been made. I've been, the blood transfusion has been made. Then you get to understanding he will. And then you got to understand he has. You got to understand he's had already done it. It's already been done. It's already been paid for with a price. And the church understands that, hey, we're up there with him. We're calling the things to be not because... We are the church. We are the bride. You and I come together, not competing, but completing. We're making heads. We're making everything just, just man, when you walk into a room, it just brightens up. Because you have an attitude, hey, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Well, I, I just, uh, in the natural, I just renewed my uh, CPR license at uh, work. I had an opportunity to go to, um, to class it's kind of funny, you know, I hadn't, hadn't done it in about four or five years. I said, well, the opportunity came up. So I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. You know, hey, it's free. There's nothing wrong with learning. And, and, we, and, and I understand this. Um, you know, the, God never changes, but his methods do. Okay? Well, some of his things have changed since I had taken CPR. Used to be uh, when it comes time, whenever it was time to do the presses on the chest, it was 15 and two breaths. Well, now it's 30 and two. And, you know, things change, and I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm going to do what I'm instructed to do. 
Well, lo and behold, yesterday, you never know when you got to be ready. We always got to be ready to apply the blood. You're trained for this. I was at Shomar's eating lunch with my wife. And I looked over to my right, and it was a, I'm not going to announce his name because I talked to him last night. But um, anyway, he, I didn't tell him I was going to do this, but he came up to me just now. But I looked over to my right, and there was this elderly man sitting there, and he was, he was out. He was going. He was going down for the count. And this woman across from him had grabbed hold of him and said, and I looked, and first me, humanity kicks in. I'm like, not on my shift, you know. This ain't going to happen, you know. And I jumped up and I said, uh, first thing I said, you know, I've been trained for this. First thing to do is make the area, make sure it's clear. There's no danger for you. Well, in a case like that, we're talking about an industrial setting, but you never know. But anyway, I, I make sure that the scene is clear and it's safe. Then you look for breathing. You know, you're looking for life. Yes, there was a little bit of life, but Bobby was hanging on. Before I had to do CPR or anything, if he's breathing, guess what? You just let him along and try to talk to him. Well, that whole time, the lady's kind of, you know, she, of course, she's a little frailed up, you know. And I didn't know about some of this till afterwards, but a, another lady was back with Paula. Should I pray? Paula said, go for it. Go, 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 you know. And I'm over here trying to be like, Call and talk to 911. Call him, hey, got a situation here, an elderly man here. We ended up being, he's, he's fine. I talked to him last night. I called him in the hospital. He actually uh, used to come here, and I, I won't mention his name because I, I didn't ask him if I could. But anyway, he was, uh, I, I called him just to check on him, and I think his medicine got a little out of whack and he's, you know, as far as it got everything unregulated. But and I called some people that know him real well and, and let them know that, hey, everything's okay. But you always got to be ready to apply the blood. Just like in that, in the natural, I had to be ready for CPR. I'm, I'm ready. Never done the, the 15 2 except on a dummy, you know. But we always got to be ready. Praise God. Next word is courage. Be strong, courageous. Do not be afraid or tremble and dread before them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not fail you or abandon you. God's Moses is telling the people, this is right before he hands, hands the keys over to Joshua, you know, hey, you got to drive this car now, Bo. You know, he said, hey, be courageous, be strong. That's what that word courage there, man. I, that's what I tell everybody all the time. You know, they'll say, what's up? I say, courage. And, and, you know, it takes them a second to, to kind of get click with them. What I'm saying is, that's what's up with me, my courage. Because I've been in a situation before, I was, I was about eight years ago, I was going into work. You know, I'm, I'm just, I've been unemployed for about six months. I'm, this is God here. And, you know, I worked for this guy for about a month. He said, I don't think it's going to work. You know, it, it's, it's what my boss told me, my current boss. A good man, too. But I changed his mind because I got in there, I rolled up my sleeves. I said, I'm telling you right now, if I'm here 60 days, 90 days, whatever it's going to be, when I leave here, I'm going to leave a mark. Hey, you know, that's, right. that's what happens. You get up and roll up your sleeve and leave a mark. You got to have courage. You know, even when I, he was telling me, I, I, but you know what, now he's one of my best friends. Because he's seen what I did because I'm going home preaching and stuff. And my, my sons, I'm right here preaching to you. I'm telling you, it's a time we better roll up our sleeves and get to work. It's a time, you know, it's a time of peace. Yeah, I'm, I'm all about that, but I'm telling you right now, there ain't but one seat up here on that throne. The rest of us need to be getting busy. Hey. Hello? Hello? <laughs> you can have rest from God. You know, a lot of people say, I'm going to just sit around and pop grapes and mouth, go up on the cloud. Well, go ahead, brother. I got things to do, you know. Get out of my way, you know. <laughs> Well, that was 14 minutes. <laughs> and I'm honored to stand up before you and tell you that was my son in the Lord. I remember when he drove that red truck off of that embankment, <laughs> he was in big trouble. And he didn't ask to see me. I just found out about it and showed up. And the way things were going, when it was time for him to get out of the hospital, there wasn't anybody available to go pick him up. I said, Ernie, I'm right here. I got you. And he just looked at me. I mean, he started. He never smiled. He could look mean if he wanted to. He looked at me. I said, come on, I'll take you home. Bless his heart. He got stuck with me for a whole half a day. He couldn't get in the house. I ain't going to leave you. And he, 
How'd you like to be like that and get stuck with a preacher on a bad day? It's a bad day and it don't feel good. And here comes a preacher. That was one of the best days of my life. I got to sow seed into him and not pay any attention about how he's feeling and what he's doing. But lo and behold, I never had any idea that he would end up at the shield being my backup, my prayer warrior. Hello. I mean, this man was an amazing man. And the reason I didn't have any intention to preach to you today is because you can't hardly ever go to a home-going service like this and the person that went home gets to tell you something very important. And nobody could have told you what he said and you heard it the way you heard it except from him because of relationships. You expect me to say that. I'm Pastor Larry. But you work with Ernie. And you play ball with Ernie. And Ernie got up and spoke the word of life to you and you heard it. And something happened when you heard it. You're like, he's right. And you saw his life. You see the spirit of God in his life. He's up there talking about, you know, walking into a room and lighting it up. I don't even know if he realizes it. But that's what we've always said about Ernie. When he walks in, the whole room lights up. And there he is encouraging you and I to be the light bulb in the room. Because there's a lot of darkness where we all go. Can I get an amen? Well, I want to honor God. And I want to honor Ernie Greenwood. And I know Ernie right now is rubbing his paws up there going, I know what you're getting ready to do. Be sweet. Because God loves you so much that even though we're all going to taste the death of the flesh, we all have the privilege and opportunity to taste the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you have never, ever been touched by God, you're in for one great experience. I spent 24 years of my life living like I wanted to. And I'm here to tell you, my daddy come driving up to my house 12 o'clock on June the 11th, 1977, from North Carolina. He had been preaching. I was smoking pot, had a pound of pot on my lap when he walked in the door. You ever been caught? I had a case of old Milwaukee on this table and a pint of liquor of Lord Calvert right here. I was ready for Clint Eastwood movies and what happened. They preempted and put on Billy Graham. And when he went off, I'm under conviction. Lo and behold, my daddy comes in. The house is full of pot smoke. I seen it going by his nose while he's sitting on the couch. I said, oh, Lord, my daddy's going to get stoned. I'm serious. And, and he never said one word about anything. And all of a sudden, I told him what happened. And I said, I guess I ain't going to get saved because I prayed and nothing happened. And my father explained to me what faith was. You receive your salvation by faith. You don't receive it by feelings. And he explained it to me. And when it hit me, it was like, you mean when I ask God to forgive me, all I have to do is believe it so. And that, it's, that's the way that works. Yes. You don't wait for lightning, ground to shake. I said, yes, sir. He said, let's pray again. Did, boy, I got it. He said, did, did you do it that time, boy? I said, yes, sir. I said, I know that I know. I said, I ask him and I believe it and it's done. And from that moment, my life never been changed. I've never been the same. It's been changed. But I want to tell y'all something. Show you how good God is. My daddy got saved in 1968. Became a Baptist preacher. His daddy was a Baptist preacher. And my daddy was amazing. But it was June the 11th of 1968 at 2.30 in the morning when he got saved. My daddy showed up at 12 o'clock and talked to me. After we prayed, about one minute went by and he went berserk. Stomping the floor, the house is booming. He's got his fist in there, going glory, glory. Glor. Scared me. You never seen no bad. I didn't seen Pentecostal do that. I said, Dave, what's the matter? He said, Son, you don't understand. It was June the eleventh at two thirty in the morning when Christ came in my heart, and it's two thirty in the morning on June the eleventh right now. And God just told me. He said, I've heard every word that you've prayed for that boy. Who you boys? Your daddy, I've heard your daddy call y'all's names out. And he's prayed for you like my daddy prayed for me. And it's all good because it won't bring nothing on you bad. It's only going to bring the good things of God in your life. And it'll change it. So to honor him, the one thing I want to do right now is lead everybody in here in a prayer that I prayed and that Ernie prayed and that we would all get into the same thing. Yes, ma'am. 
You're so good at the songs. You're so sweet. It's my fault. I just get excited. I meant to sit there and be still and let them play a song. But I'm so into it that just as soon as it ended, I, did, I laid this down and come up here and got ahead of myself. So, you know, I'll be 68 in October. What's one mistake in a lifetime? Thank you. I knew you would understand. Amen. And that song will be important. But I do. I want to lead you in that prayer. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, Lord, even the Baptist preachers, we're going to raise our hand, get out now, get them, get them down to the altar. And they're going to be, listen, old Larry Souls, long hair, and the room full of pot smoke. Bowed his knee, asked Jesus to come in his heart, and I stood up, and I was a brand new man. Y'all might not believe this. I took a whole pound of pot right then, outside, and slung it in my yard. In about two months, I was sure enough cutting grass. <laughs> Poured the liquor out, took the beer back to the little giant on Saluda Walk, carrying it, and asked him if I could get money back once left over. And he did. He gave me the money. The man that gave me the money just turned 90. He still remembers it and talks about it. Hack corn. My point is, you can just be living in any kind of way. But when Jesus Christ comes into your heart, that old nature's dead, that old man is dead, and all things become new. And I'm here to tell you, you've got heaven then, and you've got God on your side, prayer on your side. And I don't know why people, I heard a guy tell you, he said, you wouldn't believe what I gave up for God. I said, dude, what? <laughs> you don't give up anything for God. When you get God, you just get everything. Are you okay out there? So I want you to say a simple prayer with me. No tricks. Just say it. Think about it while you're saying it. That's all I want you to do is just say it out loud with me and think. Will y'all do that for me? Every preacher, every deacon, everybody, Sunday school, to everybody, pray it like you've never prayed it before. Say this with me. Say, oh God. I ask you right now to forgive me of all sin. And I thank you that the blood of Jesus cleanses me, forgives me, and I receive that forgiveness by faith in his name right now in Jesus' name. I am a child of God from this day forward. Oh, glory. Oh, I know we could talk about water baptism. No, and it's good, and we will. But right now, you just said the most powerful words you will ever be able to speak out of your mouth that will influence the rest of your eternity. The Bible says that God says, if you will confess me before man, I will confess you before angels. But if you deny him, then you'll be denied. And I'm telling you, you just prayed a prayer that if you can say down inside of you, I meant it. I meant that prayer. Oh, it's settled. All you need to do is turn around and just tell somebody if you do, is that you meant it. And that's your confession of faith. What will happen is if you're serious and you meant it, you watch. Your thinking will start, stuff will start happening. You start reading that Bible, all of a sudden, it's not like ever before. You ever picked it up and look at it, it's like, I don't understand it. I pick it up and it just jumps out and gets all over me. I have people tell me, I get more out of you talking in two verses. And yeah, 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 yeah. But it's just, a, it's just God. You get in a relationship with him and it, he just opens your eyes and you just see it. It's so awesome. So right now, they're getting ready to play this beautiful song, Rooftop. And just as they're getting ready to hit that button... You go ahead and get, just hit your button. While they're doing that, if you meant it, why don't you just turn around and look at the people you know and just tell them, I meant it. Go ahead. Tell them. Say, I'm, if you really meant it, say it out loud. Say, I meant it. I did too. <laughs> I meant it. And if you did, then wherever you would like to go to church, please go tell them that you accepted Christ. You want to get water baptized and get be a part of it and become an Ernie Greenwood and shake the world, make a mark, be a champion, and make a difference. Hit the rooftops. Glory to God. Yeah, you can give God praise. Mm.
don't say bye to Ernie. I believe if all of you said that prayer and you meant it, then all of us right now at the count of three can say, we'll see you later. One, two, three. Ernie, we'll see you later. And that's the truth, because that's what I always tell my wife, my mama, my daddy, my brother, and my friends. I'll see you later. Oh, I know bye could sound like it hurts. See you later is the truth. So I hang on to truth because that's what sets me free. Can I get an amen? Well, boys, as we're planning to dismiss here, I just want you to know, all four of you, your father made a huge mark. And as you all know, I don't have to tell you something you don't know. There's nowhere he went that when he left, they knew Ernie Greenwood was there. And they knew it. Yes, sir. Yeah, come on. My daddy was a nut. Uh, <laughs> well said. Are right, you going to be seated? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, funny story. Uh, if you really want to piss off my dad, make some bad grades because <laughs> his phone has been over my knee and it fits perfect still. Uh, yeah. Uh, daddy loved everybody over here. Uh, he's uh, proud of his family and everything. Uh, he loved y'all's boy. And he loves you, Baba. And he still does. I needed to be saved. It's good. And I'm still the good looking one, too. <laughs> he can't help it. He can't help it. All right. uh, thank y'all. That's a good one to quit on, I promise. <laughs> yeah, be free. You're free in here to praise the Lord and have a good time and clap your hands. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for standing up and doing it. Now, you know your daddy grinning like a possum in a cabbage patch. I have to talk like him right now. I don't know where he got all them sayings, but while he's preaching, he come up with all kinds of crazy stuff. I, I don't know how he did that, but he was amazing. And uh, you, you guys have his anointing. And you pick up that mantle, and I promise all four of you, you'll be riding down the road and you're going to be dealing with life's problems and stuff, and you're going to be wanting God to give you some answers, tons of whys. You're going to be surprised. Stuff he said to you, his face will come to you, and what he said a long time ago will come right back, and it'll be the answer. And that's the way the Lord will do stuff like that. So don't take stuff like that, like, oh, I was having like a, a dream or a vision of daddy. The Lord will use your father to represent himself to talk to you. So when you have dreams and visions of your daddy, it's mostly the Lord, but he knows you know your daddy. You got some good stuff coming. Amen. Well, church, I want to thank all of you for coming and supporting the Greenwood family. We love them as much as you do. We're honored they're part of our church. A church is no greater than its people. So I have the greatest church in Rock Hill. I, no, 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 don't applaud. Just throw money. But we are family here, and it's a home-going service, and I know this didn't appear to be traditional, and I'm going to just say it. He said his daddy was a nut. There's no such thing as a traditional home-going service with Ernie Greenwood. We did the best we could for what he gave us to work with, so we let him preach it because we couldn't improve it. Can I get an amen out there? Hallelujah. Well, we love you. We want to honor you, and listen, folks. They've received a lot of folks over the week, and they hadn't asked me this. I've just been doing this for 40 years, okay? They're exhausted. And they, some of you probably hadn't seen them yet, and you're like, I got to go tell them this, tell them that. I, I'm going to be short. I'm not being long. But listen, this is important. When these things are over, every, when they start, everybody's there. When it's over, everybody's gone. It really is. It's not like a bad thing. They came because they cared, but when it's over, everybody goes to work, and they get back to business. Trust me, if you can't see them, they hadn't seen them right now, just wait a few days. Wait a week or two. Call, come by, whatever. I promise you, that's when it really is good is when it trickles in after it's over. You know how many times things like this is over and everybody's gone? Really. And it's like, what happened? So y'all keep loving. Let's keep doing it, doing the word. And Greenwood family, we're going to love on y'all. Lord have mercy. And we love you more than you know. Well, Heavenly Father, 
We thank you for this great day. It's a great day to us because our brother knew you personally and intimately. And we have confidence that he is with the great I am. The one that said I was dead and am alive and I now live forevermore. Amen. And Father, we just thank you that every person today that said that prayer and received Christ, that you will strengthen them, you will touch them. And may in heaven the angels continue to rejoice over every believer that just accepted Christ. And now, Father, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor over this family. We pray for his boys to be strengthened, his mantle to be made strong in their life. And for Paula, I just speak the peace of God on you. And as a man whose wife has just went to heaven, I can tell you that laying down in that bed with your face on that pillow, when the Holy Spirit comes in that room and fills it up, no, it doesn't take the place of Ernie. But it is the most comforting and moving feeling. And the Spirit of God will give you a peace that you could never explain. And I give him all the praise, the glory, and the honor for grace in every person that loved Ernie and that is grieving. His mom, his dad, his sister. Oh, God, I thank you that you are the Greenwood's resurrection. And we give you glory. And everybody said amen and amen. So I'm going to let, if you don't, this might be a little different, but is it okay? Where's Wendell? Mr. Wendell? Where art thou? Which way are we to take the Greenwood family? This way? All right. Well, if you guys, as we came in, if you will follow me out. And there's a song called Dancing in the Streets by Van Halen. It's not necessarily my choice, but I love Ernie Greenwood, and the lyrics are really good, and Ernie is dancing in the streets of gold. So... Y'all follow me and we'll go dance in the streets.